Okay, we're all set. Okay. Uh, all right, I will call the meeting to order. Um, you want to call the roll call? Yes, Mr. Griffiths? Here. Mr. Truca? Here. Mr. Freitas? Here. Mr. Meinzer? Mr. Schultz? Mr. Whaley? Here. Ms. Yandel? Here. Okay. Um, minutes have been distributed. Has everybody had a chance to read the minutes? Are there any questions on the minutes? Okay, we have a motion to approve the minutes. I motion to approve. I second. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Minutes are approved. Thank you. All right. So let's see. The first application is for 237 West Washington Row. And yes, so this is an awning replacement, and then they also plan on painting the, the facade trim at this location. Why is this not working? Oh, is it on? To check and make sure it's on. Okay. Sometimes we forget the silliest things. <laughs> Might end up at the podium. Right, there we go. <laughs> um, I'm not sure why it's not working. Is it coming up? flipping back and forth between the desktop and that. Someday I'm going to come down here for like two hours and just troubleshoot 17 different I scenarios. <laughs> That's the team's meeting. You gotta tell PowerPoint. Click. Yeah, it's not working. I don't know. PowerPoint's my favorite slides application. <laughs> I can tell you all about it. There we go. Maybe there we go. Got it? There we go. Sorry about that. I'm just way far ahead now. Is it working on the clicker? No good or question. The... Okay, is this in a different order? Yeah, it shouldn't be. <laughs> if it is, that's fine. We'll just go in the order that you have in your Slide deck. That's his final. I think PowerPoint just like probably just now <sighs> okay. registered all those clicks that you did. Oh, I see. That's why it's okay. Catching up. I guess we'll just go on the slides. Um, so give me a second here. We're at the. Okay, so we're gonna jump down. You want to do? So yes, it'll be two two fifteen two seventeen East Water Street. Do that one out. Can we present that one. Okay. That's the for the just for the commission. That's the last one in our list, I believe. Yep. So two fifteen two seventeen East Water Street is the current site of Town Coffee Buildings. It's a non-contributing structure in the downtown Sandusky Commercial Historic District. The building was eight built around eighteen fifty four, and then. Staff believes, based on our research, that this building has been drastically altered since then. Um, it was a meat packaging company back in the 70s, and that's uh, more or less the most history we could find on this structure. Um, this in is the, the report and from 1979, it mentioned it had two stories. So at one point, a oh, second okay. story was removed from it. And you can see in the bottom right photo, there were big garage doors where there's existing brick today. So it was at one time fully painted. The applicant's wishing to paint the front facade and also to add some light fixtures along um, the top above the cornice. Um, as you can see, there is a spot that doesn't have light fixtures currently. 
So this was added to historic, excuse me, this was, the inventory from 1979 um, states this, it recently painted black brick facade, excuse me, recently painted brick facade with ornamental metal work. Um, historical significant inventory states this, originally a typical Sandusky waterfront building um, has been drastically altered. The inventory description notes that the top floor has been taken off and the existing structure is a remnant of an older building. The structure is brick with a stone foundation um, and the wall treatment is listed as painted brick. The time frame um, of the current storefront, um, the time frame of when the current storefront configuration was renovated um, is unknown. So the current applicant is seeking to plot this current applicant is applying on behalf of Saucy Brew Works, who has entered an agreement with the building owner to try to renovate and then lease the space for both Saucy Brew Works and also Saucy Coffee. Um, these two businesses have already been in place in the Cleveland area. They wish to bring both here. They both have relevant experience, um, both in the brewery sector and also the coffee sector. So it'd more or less be replacing what is already there. They want to use the same two buildings as one business, um, similar to the existing setup. So to the painting of the facade, they're proposing to paint it black with gold accents. The gold accents is currently there, so the black paint is what would be new. Um, and most of it, most of the building is currently painted. There's a few brick sections of question on to whether these are original and if it is, um, if there is significance to this historical feature. In the bottom there, the light fixtures is also on the agenda. Um, so it's gonna match the existing style, size, pace, and it will also complete the storefront as in a more unified manner. And these colors will be painted gold to match the trim of the building. Staff notes the significant alteration of the building it's undergone in the past. Um, and that because of this, we don't believe this is a historic structure contributing to the downtown historic district. Therefore, the consideration of what is appropriate should be focused on ensuring proposed changes do not detract from the overall character of the district itself. So in this case, the proposed storefront falls within the historic color palette. We don't consider it to be bold or detracting um, from the nature of the guidelines. The proposed design highlights the structure's column patterns, in this case, the details that contribute most to the character of the building itself and the exposed brick proposed to be painted may not be original brick is unsure um, in reference to the 1979 photo it has been painted in the past to what color we don't know either um, the light fixtures to be added match the existing color facades so of staff feels that granting the certificate of appropriateness um, is valid with the following exceptions and that is the paint used on the brick is appropriate to the service to be painted um, as an example, it'll allow brick to breathe as needed and contribute to the preservation of the brick material. And then two, that all applicable permits are obtained through the building department, engineering, and planning departments, and any other applicable agency prior to construction. Okay, do we have anybody from the applicant here? No? I expected them, but... I don't no. know. Did you see who joined us on the team's call? Um, I believe it was uh, Foster. Okay. Okay, so we don't. Okay, questions, comments no, from the commission? Okay. Well, um, Mr. Chairman, it looks to me, um, I do know that building used to be a two-story at one point because it used to have what's left of an elevator shaft inside. Um, <laughs> but if you look at that 70s Bay Meats um, photo, and then you look at the only exposed brick, that was uh, the garage door. Mm -hmm. So certainly not original. Um, so I don't think uh, covering that up really is uh, changing the, uh, the original historical character of the building. And since it's been so drastically altered already, I think this is a good solution. Uh, it's really not changing it a lot. It fits with the neighborhood. Um, and it's actually gonna be kind of nice for the entire building or two buildings at one point that got merged to be uniform versus kind of separated like it was now, or like it is now. And also, um, outside of the landmark, it's gonna be good to see a, uh, a business move in there because it's desperately needed in that part of town. Sure. Anybody else? 
So we're just talking about the front, the the, uh, the back's not going to be touched, the limestone and the brick. Um, as far as what they've submitted to us, this is their proposed renovation of the front facade. Okay. Uh, just a quick one for me, is the signage that's on their rendering, that's just demo signage? or That's demo signage and we will be able to review that. None of it's proposed to be internally illuminated, okay. so we'll be able to review that administratively and report that to you next time. Okay, my only other question is, do we know if it's in the, if the colors that they've selected, or the color singular, is part of the downtown color palette? I would like to mention David Mason walking in as the oh. architect in this case, so. We ended up turning, David, we turned the agenda around a little bit, so we're talking about your case right now. <laughs> Come and join us. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> there was some technical so sorry. No, 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 no it's our fine, fault. We, we so flipped the, the agenda. So. If you wanted to go to the podium, they might ask you a couple questions. Um, <laughs> it's from my research, the black is an, an historical color, color palette. It was used on exterior facades and storefronts. Um, and then that was the question. If, yeah. I'll let you take, take the lead on that. Sorry, would you like to introduce yourself, sir? And sure. <laughs> Welcome. My apologies. No, you're fine. Um, David Mason, Mason A&D, and I'm here representing uh, Saucy Brew Works uh, for the okay. renovation of the storefront. Okay. So there were two questions, I think. The first one was from Mr. Truca. I was just wondering if there was any plans to match up the back of the building the, with the limestone and brick, or if we're just talking about the front. That's I'm I, I'm told that any work in the back of the building is going to be a phase two, okay. so so um, and and what what that entails at this point I've heard the moon and 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 very little so it'll be something in between but at this stage it's just it's just a renovation of the, of the storefront. There was um, some question about the brick facade on the side where Boomtown used to be. Do you happen to know the history of that brick? No. Okay. I don't. I don't. It's our understanding that that's relatively new. It looks a lot like Bob Hare brick, <laughs> <laughs> which is, a, it which is an official, it's, it's, it's official form of reclaimed brick. <laughs> <laughs> I think that came from another building across the street. <laughs> um, okay, and then the next question was what, just whether or not the, the color, the tint of black or the black, whether that's been run through the, there's a downtown Sandusky color palette. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with that or you've seen that. I have not seen it and I'm not familiar with it, but we're happy to accommodate. I mean, if, they, if they're selected colors that, that they're pre-approved, we, we, can, we can make that yeah, work. Yeah, there is a downtown color Absolutely. palette. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll adjust. I'm blanking on that. And I thought the I guidelines were vague on the exact colors. Is there a color part of palette the design guidelines? I've never seen it. I haven't seen the color. I haven't color. seen it either. Okay, we'll talk afterwards. Okay. Also, if it's black, then we're just... It's just it just needs to be that black. Grayscale. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. right. Wow. Looks great. Let's do it. Yeah, there you go. That's all I do. All right, I need a motion then. I motion to approve. I'll second. Okay. Any further discussion? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Approve. You're done. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and I'd just like to, for the record, reiterate what. Um, the sentiment up here that, you know, it's excellent to see a new building going in, or a new tenant going into that building so quickly. That's great news. Yeah, I think it looks great. All right, moving on. Are we then on 124 East Market? Oh, we're on 237, apparently. Oh, we're back to 237. I think that... Okay. I could skip ahead if you'd like. It's a lot of way. Oh, that, oh, now we're back at the beginning, 237. <laughs> All right. The beginning. Okay. So... Whoever's 124 East Market, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so 237 West, West Washington Row are looking for two items tonight, and that is to replace their awning and then also to paint the facade trim on the bottom floor. This location is a contributing structure to the National Register and also to the downtown Sandusky Historic District. This building was built in 1889. It was, it was the original meeting site of the Independent Order of the Odd Fellows, and it was accepted at the National Register for Historic Places in 2003. The architecture is late Victorian Queen Anne um, and Romanesque. It's listed, based on the 2003 inventory, the important features are cloth awning, 
shield the storefronts. These are topped with metal strips trimmed with rosettes. It also states the ceilings have been lowered on the first and second floors. So these have been concealed by transom windows as well as the awnings. The applicant seeks to replace the existing awnings to match the existing style design and material. Um, the applicant is also proposed to recover the awnings and alter the color of all six of them. And also additional signage which will be reviewed at a later time. The awnings page in uh, the Dusky Historic Guidelines state this, um, avoid removing original mounting hardware if possible. Try to retain and repair any original hardware. If it must be replaced, try to match it as closely as possible, especially the, rec the retractable type. Um, it also states, avoid awning fabric that is too complex a design and to use minimum of colors keyed to the body and trim colors of the building. The awnings are not believed to be original in design um, or an original material to the building. Uh, based on the 1900s photo, staff did not see any awnings in place. So we believe that it, between then 1950s era, these awnings were installed. Um, however, there is evidence that this could be a contributing factor based on the age it was in the 50s. So we're looking, talking about 70 plus years that these have been a contributing um, item in this building. So. The current green awnings match the color of the window sills and frames throughout the exterior of the building. The first floor window trim is proposed to be painted as part of the proposal. The proposed black cherry awning color and black trim color meet the color standards of the guidelines. The signage will be reviewed by staff, like I said, for a later time. Um, and also a sign permit is required and will be um, looked at by staff at a later application. So talking about the trim specifically here, the original color for the storefront and window um, is unknown. The current window and storefront materials are not original to the building and um, are not considered historically significant. Staff has no opposition to the black paint color proposed. Staff would like to note for the record though that repainting the second floor window trim black to match the applicant's proposed changes is preferred or the black cherry. However, it would fall into the building owner and not the applicant to make the changes above the first floor. So despite the mismatch, staff does not believe that this should affect the applicant's ability to receive approval tonight to replace the awnings and paint the first floor trim. In conclusion, the changes are simple and, in, and inexpensive efforts to uplift a piece of our historic downtown. Um, they are in line with our preservation guidelines. Staff appreciates the applicant's efforts to bring this project in front of the commission tonight. And overall, staff is supportive of the project and supports the granting of the certificate of appropriateness with the following conditions. And that's that all the permits are obtained through the building planning and engineering department and that, it, that they retain and repair any original hardware um, as possible as part of the awning replacement process. And if it must be replaced, match the original as closely as possible. One note on this case, um, we discuss it internally since the awnings, the color, the proposal, <laughs> is in alignment with our guidelines and a minor change we normally would have a, the staff authority to approve. The reason we brought it to you is because it, the color conflicts with the green and we were like, oh, is that gonna look like Christmas? And we we felt after reviewing that the black cherry, like at the pedestrian scale, what you're gonna experience is like the red awning and the black storefront from far away. The trim, the green trim is really not that striking of a green. So we don't think the mismatch is a problem, but that's the reason why we brought it to you instead of administratively approving it. And I doubt any of the hardware, the weather we get is original Probably or has not. any significance. So that's yeah. Yeah, the rosettes are something, it's an interesting feature. I don't know if they had planned to remove those as part of this project, but I mean, you can see them in the photo, like the four dots above the awning, but um, so that was the only thing. And we could ask that, I think there's represents, representatives, is there? Yeah, there's folks on this case today if you want to ask them any questions. I remember when they sandblasted that in the early 90s. Oh, you do? Yeah. Me. <laughs> um, if the applicants would like to come and speak. Do you want us both at the same time or just? One at a time? Um, so both at the same time is fine. Okay. You can just introduce yourselves. <clears throat> That'd be great. Nathan Glass with Brady Signs. And uh, I'm Michelle Solly with uh, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services Professional Realty. Thank you. 
Go ahead. Okay, so I do have a sample. Uh, the, the rendering that was sent, obviously, on screen or on paper does not really depict the color. So I feel it's important to show that up front because it's kind of a unique color, but it is brand standard to Berkshire Hathaway. Okay. Um, this is their option. This is what they give us as an option. So that really doesn't show. Yeah. Thank you for bringing in the sample. Yeah, once, thank you. Uh, what it actually is going to look like compared to the screen, obviously. And this has been one of those things that with Berkshire, them being a franchise versus being um, and having to report to a corporate marketing team, it's been a battle for about four months of actually getting something approved to finally present to you, which literally just came to us probably a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago. This yeah. project started in like October, I think. So we've been back and forth quite a few times. Um, and we're kind of, they're kind of locked into what options they actually have uh, as far as colors and, and, you know, the graphic that goes on it and, uh, and those type of things. Uh, the awnings are not actually being replaced. Those are coming down. The frames are going to remain intact, be taken back to our awning makers. They're going to recover them in this material and the exact same items are coming back to the, to the location. Oh, okay. All right. Any questions from the commission? I guess the only the only sort of point I have is technically the you know the wind the upper floor windows should match what's on the ground floor. If you drive around town, certainly that is the case for if not all, certainly the vast majority of the buildings. I get there's a two parties involved here. Have you had any conversations with the landlord regarding? Painting the windows, is that the conversation that's been had or not? There's been a discussion, it sounds like, um, but no definitive decision has been made at this point on whether. So it's this is a unique situation. They, they're only containing uh, that corner space, right? Right. Um, the landlord has already asked them to replace or recover all of the awnings across the entire storefront yeah. and paint that trim. So this is all, this is all upgrades to the landlord's properties of the property owner's property that are coming out of the tenant's pocket just because they need to meet this brand standard for them to to do the in the next two floors um the cost i think would have probably been too much to to want to take on them as the the tenant obviously someday maybe <laughs> <laughs> okay um that was the only question i had anything else yeah i i guess alec or aaron could you guys just speak to like the signage on the awning i guess my concern would be you know if they leave then what happens like you know if they're no longer occupying that space i mean are we just gonna i don't know have to keep switching that out i, I guess why does it have to be on the awning why couldn't it be on the window or something like that i don't that's a good question a great i mean question. I, I would expect a new tenant to replace that awning with the same color or come to you with a proposal to replace all of them with a different color if if this tenant left that I just building. Hate just like see. a sign. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. I just hate to see like multiple awning colors like um, Yeah, no, I I wouldn't we wouldn't approve. If if Berkshire Hathaway left this the, the corner and then a new tenant wanted to replace just those two awnings with a different color, we would probably not approve that. We'd bring that to you for approval. Do you have a long term lease? I'm not actually, I'm just, I'm a leader, but I happen to be in the area. I'm, it is a longer term lease. I don't know exactly what it is, to be honest with you, but we are committed to being downtown. And that's the part I'm here that I can say too, is um, we um, acquired the local Berkshire Hathaway brand about a year and a half ago. And our commitment was to come downtown. I happen to be born and raised here, but I worked for the company um, in other parts of the state um, for the last three years. And been talking to our owner for quite a while about being downtown and this is where we should be and our commitment is to be downtown and stay downtown. And we moved into this space to be able to grow into it. Um, we looked at smaller spaces that have been available for some time, um, but we settled on this space um, because of the size of it and being able to grow into it even more. There's no plans to move. <laughs> okay. It's a profitable business. Yeah. So if anybody wants a house. <laughs> <laughs> um, I forget where we're at. We... <laughs> Everybody's uh, okay. Do we have a motion on this one?
A motion to approve. A second. Second. Any further discussion? I guess I would just reiterate to staff that point about making it clear to the probably to the building owner that one uh, long term. You know, we would hope to see the upper floors painted in, a, in the same color. And two, if the tendency were to change, then clearly that the you know, building owner ultimately would be responsible for changing out the awning because okay. under our signage rules, technically, if a building closes, they've got 30 days to take the sign down and move it. Okay. So. We'll send them a letter along with the, when we send the COA out to them, we'll send the owner a copy of that and then a letter stating what you said. Perfect. Okay. Assuming that you. Any other comment? Okay. Um, do we need to do a roll call? I guess. We'll, let's do a voice vote first. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Yes, we don't. Um, motion's approved. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Congratulations. Okay, 532 Wayne, is that correct? Correct, yep, I'm sticking to the order. So 532 Wayne is looking for a placement. Um, it is a contributing structure to the National Register of Historic Places. It is a residence. It was built around 1868 based on our research. Um, it's built with Italianate architecture and was accepted into the National Register for Historic Places in 1982. Some present day photos. Um, a f quick snippet from the National Register inventory from 1982. It says this dwelling has wide freeze boards with windows and brackets. The rounded window moldings are cast iron. The double front entry has paneled doors with glass panes and a transom. The porch, a later addition, has dentals along its cornice. Reeded foliated pillars in twos and threes are supports. The south side of the porch is glassed in with small pane windows and a side portico is supported by simple columns. So the applicant seeks to replace what is a temporary wooden support system of two by fours. Um, and they had stated that this wasn't an effort to save the structure from collapsing. Um, this was put in place several owners ago before the current applicant had purchased the property. Um, the applicant also noted the previous porch utilized wooded, fluted columns with ornate Greek Corinthian capitals, um, which he does not believe was historically accurate. So he's here today to propose um, what is believed to be the historical accurate columns. I'm shown on the picture here. So since this is an alteration, that's why we brought it to you today based on the Sandusky Preservation Guidelines. Um, and then this is Secretary of the Interior's Guidelines had some additional information that's, in, that's relevant. Um, it's, it states the replacement of missing features from the restoration period will be substantiated by the documentary and physical evidence. A false sense of history will not be created by adding conjectural features, features from other properties, or by combining features that never existed together historically. <clears throat> Excuse me, so since there was the Greek style columns, we thought it was appropriate to bring it to you. Um, because there is a, technically a change in the character of the building. Um, like I stated, these columns were not believed to be original, and there's substantial evidence from other local examples, which the applicant has stated he'd like to show after this quick presentation or quick report by myself um, to touch more on. Um, so there's a lot of examples from local similar architectural um, pieces from homes. And staff is appreciative of the applicant's effort to best match this to the home of the original architecture, at least what we believe to be. Um, staff is all supportive of the material chosen uh, based on the examples provided. It seems it looks like a close match, especially from the sidewalk perspective, and it would be less susceptible to future weathering. Um, and this material was, I believe, fiberglass? The material? Yes. Yep. yes. Okay, fiberglass material. So based on this, um, staff recommends granting the certificate of appropriateness for the proposed squared chamfered fiberglass columns with custom capes of cedar based on one condition, and that's that all applicable permits are obtained through the building department, engineering department, and planning department, with, and uh, any other applicable agency. 
So did you put their slides in? I did not. Our deck. <laughs> okay. Um, I can get those, but it's going to take me a minute. Okay. If you want to... <laughs> are those are these those the photos that are in the packet? Yeah. Yeah. They're the same photos. She doesn't need to get. We, we yeah. You can. You. We'll just go ahead with the photos we have in the packet if okay. you're comfortable with that. Yeah. Oh. The PowerPoint's mostly just rehashing. Okay. Just those pictures. If you're if you're comfortable with that. Yeah. No, that's fine. Perfect. Okay. Um, so yeah. So we. Or do you want to just quickly for the record? Sure. Introduce yourself. Uh, Noel Murray. Uh, owner of the house. My wife's Alexa is also here. Um, we bought the house in November uh, with these two by fours that we understand were put in about 10 years ago uh, when the old wooden columns were in danger of collapse. Um, I don't know exactly when. I do remember driving by this a couple times in my childhood and it wasn't in great shape. Mm -hmm. So we would like to uh, change the two by fours to something that looks a little better. Um, <laughs> that's why we're here today. Um, and so we we like to use fiberglass too, which, uh, and they were wood before, um, because we think that that will um, hold up better under the weather and at least prevent us from being back here again in however many years that could be. Um, and so fiberglass technology has come a long way since whenever the last columns were put in. So we think that makes sense. Um, to note that the top, the top portion would be cedar, about the top foot above it, the cape, um, which you can see in the, there's a picture in the packet of the back porch yeah, basically we're trying to match. So that curved portion at the top would be cedar. Um, that would be carved by a contractor. And then that would be affixed to the, um, to the fiberglass column, which would be uh, attached to the back. This one? This one, correct? Yeah. Okay. So you'll notice like the back has those, which look like this, and then the side comp porch has something that looks different. There's a mix of tin, um, Greek columns, and then like, um, wooden carpenter or like carpentry craftsman, excuse me, yeah. columns. So there's kind of been a mismatch of random columns thrown in this house over the last hundred years. And so we think this is the most historically accurate way to kind of get them all in line. Um, so that's that's why we're here. It's one of my top 10 favorite houses in St. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, thanks for going the extra mile to try to match it up and get it period appropriate. Yeah. Right, there's a lot of overlap in Greek and Roman history, especially in architecture, um, but there's also clear lines. So um, it seems like you guys did your due diligence there. I think we're good. We're just going off okay. and picking yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, we, if we get bogged down in our Italian age versus Corinthian columns, we'll look. We'll get out of my and just cash it out. Yeah. Um, and I think the fiberglass is the way to go. Um, for the reasons you explained, so uh, I think it's great. Well, I like the four by fours that are there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to bring up. I, I think that this obviously the the matching is exactly uh, what we need. I appreciate the due diligence there. But the one thing I was going to bring up is just you know we've approved fiberglass in the past, mm -hmm. um, so the timing is got right. It's obvious that that can match the wood perfectly, and obviously it's going to hold up for a lot longer. So um, that's a that's a great solution. Anybody else? I just loved watching the progress on the house. I walk my dog by it all the time, and it's just, uh, yeah, it's beautiful, and I can't wait to see everything done with it. Your neighbors are going to be really happy, too, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Who did the Photoshop on this? Uh, my sister. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's like five minutes. I got to turn this thing in. <laughs> well done. <laughs> okay, any further discussion? I have a motion. I'll motion. I'll make a second. Okay, so we have a motion to approve. Any last thoughts? Okay, can all in favor say aye? Aye. 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 Congratulations, aye. Mr. Murray, thank you very much, thank and welcome you. back. Yeah. I know you've been back for a while, but welcome back. And Alexa, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Good to see you, Commissioner Murray. <laughs> okay. And last but not least, well, not last, actually, we're at 124 East Market, correct? That is correct. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Chairman. 
Um, the applicant for 124 East Market Street is looking for a storefront renovation. The building is a contributing structure in the downtown Sandusky Commercial Historic District, um, right around the corner on Market Street here, East Market Street. Um, there's a lot, a lot of history in this building, unfortunately. We do know it was built around 1910, and we do also know that there's been storefronts on the first level since its construction. Some historical photos for you. This is the, on the left, the most historical significant photo I could find, which the building's been completely replaced since then. But furthermore, this, this Ohio Historic Inventory of 1979 is where we got most of our information, and they have a statement that says, um, for the significant features, it's brick in patterns, pilasters with brick designs, designs in brick over and under windows. Um, the current storefront configuration is believed to be a more contemporary renovation that drastically altered the original storefront. The design and configuration of the existing storefront has not been documented and therefore has little to no historical significance to this project. The project seeks to, excuse me, the applicant seeks to renovate the storefront at 124 East Market Street. Um, the MW Design Studio is the applicant's business name and the three components they're looking for here is window glass replacement, porcelain replacement in addition of decorative molding and then also a front door replacement. Um, so for the window glass replacement and black frame specifically, the applicant seeks to replace these with the same size location and ornamentation of the existing windows. The proposal specifies that one inch clear tempered glass with black aluminum frames will be added and the black frames replacement is a change from the current window chrome that is there right now. The second scope here is a porcelain replacement and also an addition of a decorative molding on top of the um, AZEC, I believe is the material they're using. It's the LP panels and yeah. with AZEC molding. With a with wood texture to it. The applicant seeks to replace the storefront. Um, let's see here. And they also want to add this, what they're called the um, a window frame molding or frame molding of some sort to the bottom and then also to the porcelain at the top of the images on the left. Um, so the, you're seeing the rendering or the drawing that they submitted okay. is not in your packet. Okay. They yeah. do, we just got that today, so we wanted to add it to. And they are noting in here that the existing brick will remain as is. Yeah, it won't be painted or altered. And the third item is their front door placement. The applicant seeks to replace the existing glass door with a smooth fiberglass door that has a lower pan of detail and a glass window above. Um, and this is gonna be proposed to match the black paint on the other features. So the guidelines for this one um, is just that the building's being altered based on the Sandusky guidelines, and then also the altering of color and material. The Secretary of the Interior Standards state that new additions or alterations um, related new construction will not destroy historic materials, features, and spatial relationships that characterize the property. The new work will be differentiated from the old and will be compatible with historic materials, features, size, scale, and proportion, and massing to protect the integrity of the property and its environment, and that new additions and adjacent or related new construction will be undertaken in such a manner that if removed from the future, in the future, the essential form and integrity of the historic property and its environment will be unimpaired. So some supplemental notes from staff. Um, the proposed facade will increase curb appeal from its storefront while maintaining historic significance of the building. All items that are gonna be replaced, including the windows, doors, and porcelain panels, are believed to not be original in design or material to the building, and therefore do not count as distinctive materials nor contribute to the historical significance of this building. Overall staff feels that these improvements will bring modern texture and appeal to the building's facade without disrupting the historical integrity of the building um, or its significant features or um, the district itself. Staff appreciates the applicant's proposed investment in the building and for choosing downtown for her new business and for bringing this project in front of the commission tonight. Um, staff recommends granting a certificate of appropriateness for the facade renovation um, that includes the window glass replacement, trim paint, 
as well the porcelain replacement, the addition of the decorative molding, and then also the front door replacement um, with the following two conditions. That is that all applicable permits are obtained through the building, engineering, planning departments, and other applicable agencies prior to construction, and also that no brick is to be painted as part of the project. Okay, would the applicant like to uh, speak to this? Hello. Hello. I am Morgan Wadding. I am the owner of MW Design Studio. So, nice to meet all of you. What questions do you have? <laughs> um, well, first of all, is, is there anything you want? Sure, yeah, go ahead. Corey Aldridge, building owner. Just okay. here for support. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and do you had brought a sample of... I did. So I don't know if this matters, but this is the light fixture that I want to be flanking um, the store signage out front. Um, I think it's super pretty, so I hope you do too. <laughs> Thanks for bringing it. Yeah. <laughs> people bring tangible yes. items that we can review. Yes. Um, I also brought the LP sighting. Um, obviously, this is in white. I am not a painter by trade. I am a designer, so I did not have time to paint this. Um, and believe it or not, there is a shortage everywhere. So I just got these samples in literally like 24 hours ago. Um, but this is the LP sign it, or the LP siding that will be replacing all of the porcelain that's cracked up there right now. Mm -hmm. It has holes, et cetera. Um, this is the AZAC molding that will be basically a picture frame. And I know you can't really see it very well on the rendering there. There will be, let's see. The bottom right hand, the one apothecary there, that is what a picture frame molding looks like. It just brings texture and character to a plain black slab that's gonna be up there. Again, I think it's a nice decorative touch. Um, we'll only have about 16 inches, so that border won't even be very large, but it'll be something that just adds a little bit of, like I said, texture to the building, so. Any questions, commissioners? Will the um, will the M uh, M W Design Studio sign be white vinyl hanging from the thing, or no? You're. Fine, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Morgan. I had to. I was just saying how I wish I could just put a banner up there. Uh, I don't. I still to this day, I'm like, can somebody please take that down? Well, I, 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 banner looks do good. What do you? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, you know, I, I like that, um, I, obviously we, we're okay with black, it seems like that that's in the guidelines. Uh, we just talked about that. Um, also, um, keeping the brick um, relevant is, uh, is, a, is, is great. So, and uh, thirdly, I, I do like, I mean, that is, that's our up and coming neighborhood right now. So there's a lot happening on that street yeah. and it's, it's really good to see yet another business. I think that's gonna inspire all of Market Street um, as we, uh, can walk down the sidewalks again and are about to have a big opening this weekend. For sure. So that was more of a comment than a question, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and this is gonna be a uh, high-end bespoke boutique design studio? Interiors? Yeah, so interior. I um, focus on residential interior design and decorating. Um, I do commercial work as well. I did the Boys and Girls Club, so I do dabble in that space as well. Um, but it will be by appointment only for all of my design clients. And then I'll have a small retail portion in there that'll function like a pop-up shop. So, you know, the general public can come in <coughs> and, you know, do any shopping for home accessories and home goods as well. So, great. yeah. Yeah, I think everything looks great. And, you know, thank, thank you for bringing it downtown. And I think that you being a designer is going to kind of set the precedent for others coming in on that block, so I, I think it's a, it's great. Thank you. Yeah, we need a little more uh, panache. Yeah, panache is kind of got the, the <laughs> And that vinyl sign coming down, oh. that's the oh, best wow. part I, I literally am gonna like pop the champagne yeah. out, like. <laughs> yeah. Can, you have a, can you burn it out front? Yeah. Corey, are you gonna, are you gonna hang it from another window? I, 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 the rock, I, maybe? Honestly, I begged her to come into that space. <laughs> I, I've been begging her for like, since I've known her, since, well, since I've, I bought the place. I was like, this would be the perfect space for you. Yeah. Let's do this. And I just, I, it's been a long time coming. So it's good. Uh, it's going to be great. I can't wait. And those lights are really going to pop. Don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah cool. it's exciting. I mean, you can't go wrong. With the <laughs> uh, okay. Can I have a motion on this particular application? I motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 
Hi. Congratulations, Thank Congrats. You. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Glad to see you, Morgan. Thank you. Yes, you too. Okay. Um, do we have one more application that's not on the agenda? Okay. We do, and I apologize for bringing you something that's not in your packet. Uh, it was through no one's particular fault. Um, Landmark Bar and Grill is uh, proposing to extend their outdoor patio. Normally, we have some um, protocols in place that when they submit plans for something like this in the to the building department, it flags in our system and tells them that they need a certificate of appropriateness in order to give permits. In this case, they had come before Landmark Commission, it was in February 21, for a patio, to build a patio, and they received a certificate of appropriateness for that project. So that made it so that they didn't realize that they needed one for this, because it's different than that. So there's some internal conversations we're having to make sure that we can do some process improvement to help yeah. reduce the number of times that happens or hopefully not happen again. <laughs> um, but we, it's been brought to our attention that they've received a, uh, an encroachment permit for this, they've received their building permits for this, and apparently they've been around for a month. The plans have been, and we just, it was just brought to our attention yesterday. So uh, we talked to Mr. Griffiths today, and he felt that it was appropriate for us to bring this to you and seek a specific certificate of appropriateness for this project, because the project that was um, approved before is gonna be separate from this. And I'll show you that. So this is, and my, now I'm not clicking. I'm gonna wait. I wonder if it. Oh, because you went on Teams. I click on It has to know that we're on PowerPoint. Yep, okay. you gotta click back on that PowerPoint. Should be good. Okay. Okay, so this is a contributing structure to the downtown historic Sandusky district. It was national. It is nationally registered. Um, the the uh, report says that it was seriously altered and it was in the process of being restored in 1979. It was believed to be built in 1860. It was known as the Moose Club in that report. Um, this picture is from a summertime um, existing condition that shows how they use the existing patio on the west side of the property that faces Shade Mylander Plaza. The project scope is to extend that existing patio along the back of the building overlooking Shoreline Drive. The elevation, the materials, and the design are meant to complement the existing patio, so you'd be able to just walk around the back of the building from that elevation. Um, and like I said, the right away encroachment and building division have signed off on the project. What are the, oh, there it is. I forgot what the. Yeah, so I, I went down there today, took some photos for you. So this is the existing um, patio and the foundations, the footers and everything that are existing look just like they are proposed in the, in the building and the diagrams uh, for this project. The footprint of it that they are getting an encroachment permit that's been surveyed out is uh, this footprint. So you can see how that is going to go left of the building, a little west of the structure, so it can connect to their existing patio and go along the back of the property. Uh, this is so in this drawing, you can see the little like bumpy cloud edit. It, they had previously envisioned that this would connect to the portion of the kind of phase two or later project um, that they plan to build into the empty lot. That is what already has a certificate of appropriateness. So this one is now just, just connecting to their existing patio along the back and that's why we wanted to bring it to you for, if, you know, if you're willing to make a motion on something you're just learning about today, um, we'd love to see this approved so they can begin construction on it. Uh, this is the drawing, and I just I put in a like a, a orange transparent block so you can see how this looks on the existing building. So, uh, from what I'm understanding on this drawing, and I think uh, Mr. Foster, Jeff Foster, is on the team's call, so he, the architect, he can answer any questions you have. But the um, the patio, it's a very simple design, a simple railing system. Um, so it looks like sounds like somebody unmuted. Maybe stay muted just a little longer. Um, and if you look at what the design guidelines say, um, they, they actually recommend a simple design and detail for porch designs, avoiding addition of brackets, scroll work, spindles, or other decorative detail. So this uh, simple design does align with our design guidelines. So we would 
<clears throat> we would recommend approving the certificate of appropriateness because this project matches the existing character of the patio that's in place today. It matches the character of the previously approved side patio that has its own COA. And then uh, we believe it's not detrimental to the historic character of the architecture. And it also aligns with our downtown plan. So we heard a lot in that downtown plan, a desire for more waterfront, more off outdoor dining. Uh, it was a major finding during the public engagement and it's a recommendation of the downtown plan. Okay, thanks. Uh, I guess the first question for the commission is, are there any objections to us hearing this at this short notice with the information we have at hand? No objection. Okay. So hearing no objections, we'll proceed. Is, you said Mr. Foster is the architect. Is he on the call? And if so, would he like to speak to this? Uh, yeah, I'm here. Uh, Jeff Foster, Pato Architects. Um, so as Aaron had uh, described, you know, this was originally going to be part of a bigger project between the two buildings. Uh, we ran into some sort of technical issues with the properties between those two. So that project is on hold, but this is the goal of this is to connect to the existing West deck and to provide uh, more outdoor seating, which has certainly been an amenity for that location. Um, and in terms of style, you know, we want to complement what's there. And originally it was going to tie in with a much broader uh, deck across the back of the property so those styles are meant to be consistent so if that project does move ahead that project would certainly be complementary in terms of its in terms of its details so here to have, happy to answer any questions I mean this is really out of the landmark realm but um, I'm assuming as architect of record and and the uh, fire marshal that it looks like the back steps were taken out so there's no issues with egress um, no the, Okay. There is not. Any other questions? And just for um, the newer members on the Landmark Commission, the, the, there's a certificate of appropriateness that has already been approved for the vacant lot that's to the east, I guess, of Landmark. Um, these would tie in, but this application is separate. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Foster. Can I have a motion on this? Um, I guess we're moving to approve this application. Is that correct? If, if you're comfortable with that. Is, that, is there a staff recommendation on this or not? Yeah, our recommendation is to approve this. Okay, so we're motion to approve. I'll second. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, that is approved. Thank you very much, Mr. Foster. Appreciate you putting this together at uh, short notice. Thank you very much. And Dave Beer's on the phone too. He just Dave's dying to say something because he's <laughs> oh, okay, Dave. Dave. Congratulations. <laughs> he said free cocktails for everybody for whenever. <laughs> That's on the record. Doesn't he have to get ready for tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> is the beer green yet, Dave? <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much. See you in the morning, Dave. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay, we'll move ahead with administrative approvals. Yeah, we do have one on the agenda tonight. This is at 169 East Washington Row. Just give a brief background. The applicant wished to cover the whole window like this because of the business he has with a package. There's apparently some extra compliance and rules they have to follow for windows um, within an office space. Um, and that was through the credit bureau and the mortgage compliance standards. So that's something we were working with the applicant to try to accomplish. Um, so since the window coverage isn't considered a sign, we were only looking at the words um, or any other language like the phone number on there. So we had gone back and forth for probably a month with three other designs on the left here, um, faded out a bit. So these were his first three proposals that staff wasn't comfortable with based on either design or uh, the amount of space it took up on the window or just various design aspects. So we felt the one on the right was appropriate based on the 25% um, clause in our code that window signs can't be more than 25% of the window. Um, and we also felt, felt the colors and the scheme matched our historical guidelines. So we granted um, this um, on February 10th of 2022. 
And I would just want to thank the applicant for going back with us back and forth several times. So the top left was the first thing that they submitted. So we worked with them to get that message all in one window pane instead of spreading across multiple multiple window, window panes. Uh, we got the phone number condensed down a little bit to a little bit more on the pedestrian scale rather than uh, the vehicle scale. So we thought that we scaled it down to more of the pedestrian scale. Um, and like Alec mentioned, they, they have to cover the windows in order to have offices close to the windows because of this type of business. It's not a permanent okay. you know, change. Understood. So It does raise an interesting question, and mm -hmm. we have it. We had it with the um, West Washington Row application too, where as we grow and expand, we have corporate guidelines and or other regulatory guidelines that effectively conflict with potentially our, you know, I think, I think if this was just a grocery store, we'd be saying you can't cover the windows. Correct. So that's something we probably, as we go into our design or our um, guideline review, mm -hmm. hopefully later on this year, we just need to think about how we deal with that. It'd be nice to have some specific language in there. Yeah. Some so, okay. There. Any other thoughts or comments on this from the commission? All right. Okay. Any other business? That's it. Um, just note: Are we? We would like to present to you ideas for um, a new historic district or two, and for discussion. But we currently don't did not have a staff capacity to bring it to you this month. It has been okay. like March Madness to every definition of that term that you. Yes. Can. <laughs> <laughs> I, agree. I feel like we've been between Alec and I, we've been doing not the job stop. of at least five humans this <laughs> last several weeks. I don't think March Madness has even officially started yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow, I think. Yeah, yeah. tomorrow. I, right. I can say that I usually use one of these notebooks for about a month and a half of meetings, and I've used one. I needed a brand new one for today. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks very much. We have a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. And we are adjourned. Thank you very much.